Hey guys, so today's video is going to be talking about why I struggle with body image. I have been getting a lot of slack from people lately because I talk about it on a pretty regular basis on my Snapchat. A lot of people seem to think having body image issues is something to be ashamed of. And I honestly think a lot of the people who are giving me slack about it probably have a lot of body image issues themselves. It's definitely not easy being a girl. <laughs> Let's just face it. I think guys also struggle with this issue, but you know, girls are naturally the more attractive of our species. Women are designed to be the beautiful ones. <laughs> so that's just how our species works. So we're going to be competitive towards each other. We're gonna have body image issues. It's just natural. I think that we can definitely help support each other by coming out, talking about why we struggle with our body image and um, also, I wanted to touch on having an eating disorder. I wanted to talk about why I struggle so very much with body image, and I think I have really good reason, which I'm sure you will agree with after seeing this video. Growing up, I was always a pretty overweight child. Um, I think, well not always, it probably all started when I was around um, eight that I started noticing that I was becoming bigger and plumper than all my friends. And ironically enough, I was actually quite a bit taller than a lot of my friends at the time, which is weird because now I'm really short. It's just like, I stopped growing. So yeah, I always had kind of a big belly that would stick out. I don't have a picture example for you at the moment. I wish I did. If I was at home, I could show you what I mean. I wasn't like an obese child, but I was like very obviously overweight and I would get picked on in school for it, you know, amongst lots of other things, you know, I've always had crooked teeth, I've always had a lazy eye, there's a lot of issues that, there was a lot of struggles for me growing up. Um, weirdly, my mom thought that I was just like an early developer, like she bought me a bra like at age eight because I started getting boobs because I was kind of heavy, that's why. I don't think it was because I was going to be this like really full voluptuous you know, busty woman. It wasn't that, that case at all. It was just that I was overweight, so my boobs were a bit bigger than my friends at that time because I was a bit bigger than my friends. I wish it was the other case scenario. <laughs> I started catching on to the fact that I was overweight at a very early age, um, mostly from being made fun of, but you know, also I had a naturally um, quite a slim sister. She was always really like much smaller than me growing up. Um, it wasn't until she hit a certain age that she started sprouting above me in height, but like at the time she was like really petite, really skinny naturally, um, and we both grew up on the same diet. We both were pretty inactive <laughs> during our childhood, um, which speaking of which, I really feel like I should have been put in some sort of sport or activity, like my genetics and my build, I have a very athletic, curvy figure. I feel like I should have been in some kind of sport, like my dad, he was in track, he was one of the fastest guys in school, I take a lot after him. Um, I lived a very, very sedentary lifestyle, which was not, was not healthy for any child, but when you're kind of an athletic build, I think you should, I think that, you might need more exercise than other people. I don't know. I would even, in school, I would even like, I don't know, a lot of people seem to think I was joking, but like when I was only like nine or 10, I would tell people like, yeah, I'm gonna go on a diet. My teachers and stuff would think that I was just kidding or that I was joking and they thought it was so weird that a nine or a 10 year old would be like saying they wanna go on a diet. But like, um, I would say that all the time, I was like, I really need to go on a diet, like I'm really overweight. Like I didn't actually go on that diet, which just ended up turning into an eating disorder. I didn't know at the time that there was a difference between an eating, eating disorder and going on a diet, which honestly, now that I'm a high carb, low fat vegan and I know that you can lose weight, eating normal amounts of food, like eating at least 2000 calories a day, so long as you're eating the right foods, um, there really isn't that much of a difference between going on a calorie restrictive diet and an eating disorder. I was 12, 12, 13 when I started going through this phase. It was the year before I had started high school or the summer before I had started high school and I lost so much weight in just three months time because I just knew, like I made the decision one night, I still remember this very vivid night, I was sleeping on the couch, it was thunderstormy and I can remember saying, this is it, I've had enough, I don't wanna be, the chubby girl anymore like I want I want to have 
I want to be skinny like all of my friends. I want to be skinny like my sister. Um, I, I don't want to be made fun of anymore. And I just said, I'm just not going to eat hardly anything this whole summer. And I'm going to, I'm going to start, I'm going to get the exercise DVDs out of my mom's closet and I'm going to go for morning jogs and just all that stuff. And that's what I did basically the whole summer was like basically starve myself. My family did start getting really, really worried. Um, I had episodes where I almost passed out in the shower. Like the most I ate was probably around 500 calories a day. I had maybe a couple of boiled chicken breasts. Um, I didn't eat any vegetables or fruits really. I had like white crackers, um, anything that was extremely low calorie and that was going to kind of satisfy my my cravings for things like chicken and salt, <laughs> basically. Um, yeah, so it was like a whole summer basically like that. And on top of it, I was working out anywhere from two to three hours a day. We had a Richard Simmons DVD and it was like an hour long and I would do it twice every single day, plus go for a run. And I had episodes where I almost passed out, especially in the shower. Like I would start seeing spots and I would almost pass out. And um, I think when I started coming out of this eating disorder thing, it was probably when I started hearing people tell me that um, I look so good and that I look skinny. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, my mom was particularly concerned because she was worried that I was, you know, obviously not eating enough and she was like, maybe we should take you to see a therapist and all that stuff. Um, but I argued against her. I was like, mom, I have to do this in order to be skinny. I'm not like the other girls. And she didn't agree with that, of course. And I think my dad even, like, we were very close at the time, but my mom called my dad to talk about it. And then my dad wanted to have a phone conversation with me about, um, for some reason, he kept talking about Tom Hanks <laughs> and how, how, he had to lose weight for his role in Castaway or something like that and how he did it safely and all that stuff. So he was like trying to give me his like valid advice. He's like, you know, that's good that you're being active, but you need to eat too. So like I, I started noticing I had concern from my family members and I also at the time was um, internet chatting and phone chatting with my husband, my current husband at the time. And um, I was really self-conscious, not just about my body, but I also didn't think I was pretty. Like, I just thought I was an ugly girl. Me and my husband were, ch were, ch were chatting for such a long time and he had already sent me pictures, but I didn't want to send him any pictures because I thought I was ugly. And I kept coming up with excuses as to why I couldn't send him any pictures. Like, oh, I don't know how to use a scanner or, <laughs> you know, all the stuff that you used back then. And um, we, me and my friend, um, took a whole bunch of pictures and I was wearing like a really short skirt and like it was so weird because like when you have these these mental when you have these mentalities about yourself that you're ugly it doesn't matter if you get compliments from other people like we were walking around I was wearing a short skirt that I really should not have been wearing it was way too short I was walking around town my friend was taking pictures of me my girlfriend not a guy and um was like these little disposable cameras so we can send them in the mail to my husband B <laughs> and um I got like honked at so many times that day and I didn't even realize that people thought I was attractive so my confidence boost went up a little bit and um, but then when I when the pictures got developed um, I freaked out we went we picked them up at like Walmart or Target or something and I was like gosh I'm so fat I can't send these I took we took so many pictures and I only came to the conclusion to send him like two and both of which were like from here up and like my face there were so many pictures and now like I can look back at these pictures now and be like I was so skinny <laughs> What was I talking about? Yeah, I just had some pretty some pretty bad issues when it came to like Getting used to the fact that I was no longer overweight. So I started getting a little bit happier when like I found out that my husband would be able to come and stay with us and like you know my boyfriend at the time and we would do kind of like a foreign exchange, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was very strict. My mom made sure we weren't sleeping in the same bed or anything like that. My 
eating disorder got a little better. I started getting a little nervous uh, leading up to the time before he came, but at the same time, like he just made me so happy. I didn't really want to starve myself anymore. I started eating food again and um, I think it was only like maybe the night before he came that I decided to not eat a whole lot because I just didn't want to have a bloated stomach or something like that. But I basically grew out of the anorexia, the extreme anorexia pretty quickly. It only lasted maybe a year all in all with the anorexia, thankfully. But then at that point I started getting other kinds of eating disorders like you know, I was overeating, I was overeating the wrong kinds of foods and binging, you know, all that stuff and that led me to gain a lot of weight over the course of time. Like I went from probably, my skinniest was 115 pounds, I'm five foot two, at the time I was maybe a little shorter, um, to 115 pounds to a grand total of 230 pounds by the time I had reached 19. So from 14, till 19. I gained over 100 pounds. I had already reached the 200 pound club, as my family likes to call it, um, by the time I was, when I was still a teenager. And, um, you know, I struggled with a lot of different things, not just being fat when it came to, not just the fact that I was different than my friends and that m my body reacted differently to food than theirs did. Um, like my body just was like, heck no to the meat, the dairy and the processed foods right away. I also struggled because while I was so focused on becoming like super skinny, I remember seeing a lot of my friends start to get boobs and like start to change. And I feel like even so I got my period at a crazy early age, which could have a lot to do with the fact that with the reasons why I was gaining weight more easily than my friends too, because maybe I had estrogen excess or something like that. Cause I started my period at only nine. Nine. Well, I started my period at nine. My friends didn't start their period till around 12 or 13. Um, but they started developing breasts at around 11, like a little bit before they got their periods, which I thought was interesting. So I was like the other way around. Like I was getting my period first and then taking a really long time to develop. And I think a lot of that was from my eating disorder. Not that I think I would have been busty anyway. Even so I'm not busty, you know, I've definitely got pretty wide set hips, you guys know that. Um, so I did develop just in my own way, but I feel like it did take longer, it was later. So I did start to struggle, like I finally had reached the goal of becoming the super skinny person that I always wanted to be. And then my friends started getting big boobs and I was like, well, I'm not. <laughs> must be something wrong with me again. I just feel in a lot of ways, like I've just never had, I've never known what it feels like. Like right now, I think why I'm struggling from body image issues still to this day and why it's so bad is because I don't really feel like I've ever had a time where, you know, I've seen girls make videos talking about going through puberty and how much of a shock it was for them. I never had that because I was so concerned with being skinny and trying to not be overweight, you know what I mean, struggling so very deeply. It for one hindered my development. I went through just this phase of never knowing what my body actually looks like. You know, like it was always changing, like all the time. It was always up and down, up and down. My body is just really got to heal from the abuse that it's taken from the anorexia and from the overeating and the binge eating. And right now why I feel like I'm struggling with body image issues is because I feel like I'm getting to know my body for the first time now. And it's hard to do that after you've had two kids, after you've weighed 230 pounds because honestly, I like my body. I think you know, if I could choose to have things different without surgery, I would choose to do so. <laughs> However, I feel like, you know, I'm healthy now. I've come to really like my body's shape. I've really come to love my, you know, nothing but a handful of boobs <laughs> and my toned legs. I, I really like all these things about myself, but it's hard to see all the damage that's been done in the past. So it's like, I'm finally getting to see what's what my body is but with 
stretch marks and with wrinkly skin and with cellulite galore, even like these like veins on my outer thighs and just, it's not easy, it's not an easy process and you know, we live in a very competitive society and I think by nature girls are, you know, they want to be superior to the other by nature, you know what I mean? And I wanna make a video talking about this because I, I don't believe that there is an ideal body shape. There's so much articles out there and so much information saying that yes, the hourglass shape or the pear shape or whatever, like depending on what culture you're from, because I know in our culture, the hourglass is really like, ah, oh. and in Brazil and South America, the pear is like, getting all the fame but there really is no such thing as the ideal body shape because that's changed centuries over centuries and um big boobs are not better than small boobs men like boobs of all sizes <laughs> that's just the reality of it um some people think it has something to do with higher reproduction but after doing a heck of a lot of research i have seen and also just looking around me, I have seen that to not be true. I have tons of friends who are naturally slim, who don't have a lot of curves, who get pregnant really easy. And I have a lot of friends who've got big boobs, big butts, big hips, who have suffered from things like PCOS. It does not. Your body shape doesn't have that much to do with your reproductive health as the media says, um, or as much as even science says. So I wanted to make, so like some follow up videos is just talking about how I've struggled with my boobs, those have been one of the biggest things for me because a lot of my friends did develop pretty good sized chests and um, I did not. So I've always kind of envied girls with larger chests and I'm just now starting to like, be like, okay, you know what? That's, these are my boobs. Let's just try to embrace some of the things that are positive about having a smaller chest. And, you know, my wide hips have always been a big issue for me, um, but apparently now people are getting surgeries for that because everybody wants to be like Kim Kardashian these days. Um, so, you know, it's like, it's just, it's all silly, it's all made up in our minds. It's really hard for me to just come out and say all of this stuff, but this is how it's been for me for a very long time, and I do feel like I have had a pretty rough go about in becoming a woman. We all do. Women's bodies are always changing um, from puberty to breastfeeding, to pregnancy, blah, blah, blah. And I've gone through all of it with, you know, eating disorders and obesity on top. And it's just, it hasn't been an easy journey and I'm still, I'm still learning and I'm still young. I think a lot of people don't really like, I'm a mom, yeah, but like, I'm still only 26 years old. And I feel like now at 26 years old, I'm just now getting to see and accept my body for the way it is, you know? So yeah, I hope you guys understand a little bit more now of why I struggle with body image so much. Um, I did talk about this a while back ago. I was a little bit more emotional that day. It's not just that girls compare themselves to each other, guys do it too it's kind of a natural thing, but what kind of irritates me is that guys are also being, guys and girls are being conditioned into believing there is a stereotypical body shape that is the best, or there's a stereotypical face shape that is the best. You know, it's just it's all so silly. <laughs> it's not true. I think that the reason why we all come in different shapes and sizes, different people are going to be drawn to different things. And that's just how it is. And at the end of the day, what's inside, it's true. I know it's so cliche, is what matters. I feel happy, like in some, some days I kind of feel like, babe, do you really think I'm attractive? Because you've been with me when I was like, 230 pounds and I just kind of sometimes wonder like Because like I know obviously he likes me for me and what's inside and that's very important But some days I kind of feel like Am I more <laughs> than that to you? Like do you also find me physically attractive? It's also kind of the basis of how we met um, You know like we've got to know each other on the phone first He didn't see pictures of me for ages and he kind of fell in love with my personality and um, so it wasn't like a attraction you know what I mean like it's not like he just like saw me across the room and had to come say hi and I've never been in any other relationship than our relationship and Germans are not that great at giving compliments let me just tell you that maybe not all but quite a few of them I have quite a few friends with German husbands they're not always the best at telling you 
wow, you look so great today, or that looks really pretty on you, or your hair looks really nice. Like they don't do that. So um, I think I don't get a whole lot of reassurance. And in Germany, you don't get hit on as much as you do in the States. I can tell you that guys are a lot more laid back here when it comes to that. It's not that it does not happen, but it happens not very much. And I don't like to get cat called at, but sometimes it's nice when a stranger says, gives you a compliment or something like that. It's, it's always sweet. I hope that this video made sense in the end. I'm gonna go ahead and go and stop rambling now. And these are, I know I'm not very emotional right now, but you know, if you follow me on Snapchat, you will probably see some crying episodes every now and again with me complaining about body image. It happens on a regular basis. Those of you who follow me on Snapchat know that, but today, I'm in a good place. My kids are with my husband away <laughs> right now, so I've got like me time and I'm just in such a good mood today. So um, maybe that's probably the best way I could have gone about filming this video because otherwise I would have been a crying mess the whole time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one.